then why do you want to mislead us? If we are so totally irrational and always have been, why do you want to teach with rationality, the rational solution of problems as the basis of your what you do right? For two reasons. In the first place, I have to live with myself. I feel that since I do appreciate rationality, I do believe I have a kind of ability to be a skeptic, to insist on evidence, to want things to make sense. I have the duty to say so, just as some people feel that they have the call to spread God's word. I believe that if there's such a thing as God's word, it's rationality, and I have the call to spread it. And secondly, even though I don't think I'll convert the world to rationality, I may influence an occasional person here and there. And every small addition to the sum total of rationality is precious, and I would like to be responsible for as many drops as we can possibly add to that small pond. Well, let's, let's enlarge the pond. Tell me what the motivation would be for someone to embrace the rational ethic that you relate to. Well, for one thing, you understand the universe better. Uh, to believe in nonsense is really to limit yourself terribly, to live in fear of all sorts of things that don't exist. Uh, imagine, if you will, uh, how it must have been in the old days when you believed in, in, in ogres and, and devils and all kinds of monsters and evil fairies. I mean, the whole world was filled with intelligences superior to your own that were malicious and evil, and you lived in terror. Now, heaven only knows that there are evils in the world, <clears throat> and there are dangers, but you might as well concentrate on those that really exist and not create them for yourself and try to live surrounded by these imaginary menaces. But even you say, heaven only knows. Even you resort to something that is quite that irrational. Well, you know, that's the English language. I say I'm enthusiastic about thus or so. But if you look at the derivation of the word enthusiasm, it means God within a person. Since nobody believes that a human being, all on his own, can accomplish great things. When you get the enthusiastic person who does accomplish great things, it's because some God is acting upon him. Therefore, I use the word enthusiasm, even I don't believe that it's some God working in me. Now, wait a minute. Let me, let me go back over this, if, if, if I may. Uh, you want to serve mankind, and you believe that you can do that best by emphasizing the rational within us. But clearly, the gods, the terrors, must have served us at least well enough for us to have maintained them all of these eons. Why do you want to take them away from us? They served us because we knew so little about the world. We live in uncertainty. We know that at any time disaster might strike. We cannot foresee the future. It is very uncomfortable to live under such conditions. People make up ways of controlling the future. They dream about fairy godmothers who give them gifts. They go and ask questions of fortune tellers of all kinds to give them a hint as to what may be in store for them and how they may best persuade fate to deal kindly with them. Or if they're religious, they'll pray to God. Something like that. It gives them a feeling of security. Now... There's no use having false security if there's nothing else available. That's what people go for. But now, if, uh, for instance, a person insists on some sort of mumbo-jumbo, instead of, let us say, taking advantage of modern medicine, then, uh, you know, he's virtually committing suicide. And I would hate to see people go to these faith healers and things like that. Mr. Kazimov, and did you get any heat, so to speak, from a, an effort you made one time to rationally explain a lot of the Bible miracles? Oh, surprisingly little. Didn't uh, get a lot of tracts mailed to you? And... Well, well, I got some, yes, and also some letters telling me they were praying for me, which is kind. That's nice. And occasionally, occasionally, very occasionally, I'd get a letter calling me names. Mm -hmm. uh, but then my usual answer was to tell them that I'm sure... 
they thoroughly believed that when I died I was going to go to hell and suffer indescribable tortures for all of eternity. Yeah. And in that case, why should they bother calling me names in addition? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never got an answer. Probably, they're probably working on the answer. They just don't write as fast as you do. <laughs> uh, wh which ones gave you the most trouble? Um, parting of the Red Sea, the burning bush? The... Actually, what gives me the most trouble is every time I write something supporting evolution. That somehow sets off people. Supporting evolution? Yes. They want to write back and tell me that evolution is just a theory, or they send me little tracts which prove that uh, human mm -hmm. beings have only existed for a few thousand years, and so on. Well, could maybe somebody should clear up the use of the word theory, since uh, gravity is a theory, too, but nobody doubts it, does he? Well, a, a theory is a collection, is a, is a system of thought that explains a great many disparate observations and puts mm -hmm. them all into a single structure. Otherwise, it's just a pile of observations. Yeah. You might say this, a pile of bricks are facts. Mm -hmm. An architectural blueprint that you follow to build a structure is a theory. Somehow theory's gotten the meaning of guesswork attached Yes, to I know. That's because mm -hmm. it's improperly used. Mm -hmm. A hypothesis is a suggested possible theory which would require support. Once it receives sufficient support, it becomes a theory. And theory of evolution has incredible quantities of support in every branch of science from biology from chemistry from geology from everything it is it is inconceivable really that evolution does not exist uh, the only arguments people have on the exact mechanism uh, the mm -hmm. the analogy is nobody is going to argue that automobiles don't exist or that they don't drive when you take off the brake and step on the gas. As to what goes on under the hood, if you're not an expert, there are probably many theories. Mm -hmm. I myself don't know what goes on under the hood, but I know the car goes. But the, thing, the fact that species adapt and so on and change and... And that you have a whole series of fossils which show, yeah. and the biochemistry of the genes also shows relationships, mm -hmm. and we actually see evolution work before our eyes and many changes that take place in, uh, in animals, usually in animals that, uh, that, have, that are short-lived and have many young, so yeah. that evolution speeds up. We find it in insects easily. Remember Mort Saul's great joke, you look at the great leaders of this country, Washington, Franklin, Madison, Jefferson, and you look at what we have today and what can we learn from this, A, Darwin was wrong. <laughs> 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 Maybe that'll give some comfort to your, uh, your, your enemies on the evolution.